Hello everybody, this is Austin from Craft Crickets in Eugene, Oregon. Welcome back to our video series, Introduction to Cricket Farming. Today we're going to talk about a really important topic, egg laying, and getting those eggs to incubate so you can get a bunch of baby pinhead crickets. Now, before you give a substrate for your crickets to lay eggs, you need to make sure that they're physically capable of laying eggs. A lot of people put up the substrate too early when the crickets aren't old enough. For me, one of the easiest ways to tell is just to use your senses. One, listen to the crickets. When you hear crickets chirping, that means that the adults have reached, or the males have reached full adulthood. They're not able to chirp before they've reached adulthood. So when you hear chirping, you know that they're getting pretty ready to mate and to lay eggs. But when you first hear chirping, they're not physically capable quite yet. Wait another week or two, uh, maybe even wait three weeks afterwards, just so most of your crickets are full adults ready to lay eggs and you can maximize the amount of eggs you get in a short amount of time. Then, after it's been a few weeks since you heard that initial chirping, and at this point you may even see sacks of sperm on some of the crickets, at that moment you know that it's perfect to get your crickets to lay eggs. Now, to do so, you need to give them a good substrate, something that they can sort of bury their eggs in. So the female cricket is going to want to stick her ovipositor um, into some sort of surface that she can break the ground with, sort of like dirt, and deposit the eggs slightly below the surface. If you don't have something like this, they're not going to have something to lay their eggs in, and um, they may fruitlessly try to lay eggs in areas where they shouldn't. So for a substrate, I use either peat moss or coconut husk. Coconut husk might be a little bit more preferable because it's more sustainable. Uh, but before I give my peat moss or coconut husk to my crickets, I need to do a few steps to prepare it. Firstly, the peat moss that I've bought, I don't know if there's already something living inside of it. Uh, very well, other animals could have laid their eggs in it because it is such a popular uh, enticing substrate. So what I tend to do is I take whatever substrate I'm going to use and before I give it to the crickets, I put it in the microwave for a minute. Now, this just will kill anything that's in it uh, so that when you put your substrate in the bin, other critters don't start hatching out of there or other critters that might be burrowing in there don't start climbing, climbing around. Uh, we don't want that. Now, once you microwave it, it's still not ready to go in with your crickets because, as I said, it's a perfect, perfect uh, substrate and a bunch of things besides crickets want to lay their eggs in it. Now, even if your brooder has a lid on it so that things can't get into it, there is a chance that things are going to get into there and also lay their eggs beside your cricket eggs. Uh, this especially happens often with fruit flies. Fruit flies we can get into your bin because you know they can fit through the cracks of your screens. And additionally, if you put fruit in your bins like I do, uh, they're going to be extra incentivized to get into that bin and to lay their eggs. So we need to deal with fruit flies because fruit flies will lay their eggs in the substrate and one of the problems is fruit fly eggs hatch much quicker than cricket eggs. So while you're incubating your substrate, you have a risk of having colonies of fruit flies being hatched all over your farm. And so we don't want to do that. So a uh, little trick that I use is I change the pH content of the substrate a little bit. Now, I do that by just adding a little organic garden lime. So this is just some limestone, and what's great about limestone is it's alkaline. And you may have done this in your garden at home. You add it to change the pH of the soil. And, and that's exactly what we want to do, because if your substrate is slightly alkaline, uh, fruit fly eggs will not hatch. The fruit flies will still lay those eggs, but they'll never hatch. And what's great is your baby crickets when they hatch, they can eat those fruit fly eggs that haven't hatched yet. So uh, I like to take a little bit of this limestone, uh, very little. I've had this bag for a year and it feels like I haven't even dented it. Uh, put maybe half a teaspoon max, uh, probably a quarter of a teaspoon uh, is sufficient, in with your substrate, mix it up. Then the very last thing I do is you need to make sure that it's moist. Um, you don't want to have a dry substrate and it needs to be moist enough so the female can, cricket can deposit the eggs about a centimeter below the surface. So um, I get mine quite wet. 
Um, don't get it as wet where there's mud or standing water, but you want to get it very moist, uh, moist to the touch, and something that's not going to dry out right away. Once you have it, you can put this container into your bin. So what sort of container do you want to put your substrate in? I mean, it really doesn't matter. Um, I really like just using like old plastic salsa containers. Uh, this you can use many times. It's a decent enough size where a bunch of crickets can be laying eggs at one time. What I also like about these uh, containers is that they're transparent and when the crickets lay their eggs, you can actually see along the side uh, how densely they've been laying their eggs. Because a problem some people have is they'll take the substrate out of the cricket brooder before many eggs are laid. And um, this is just an easy way because you can see right into the dirt without digging around uh, to see if they've laid eggs. Um, if I want to get a lot of eggs though, I'll use a bigger container than this, just so more crickets can be laying eggs at one time. Once you put this out, they are biologically driven to go and lay eggs. And if there's not enough space for all the crickets who want to lay eggs to lay eggs, they won't or they'll fight and you'll just not get as many eggs as you'd like. So uh, the biggest size I use is like an 8x8 eight eight, uh, cooking pan. And I like this because it's reusable. I can use it over and over again, just like a plastic thing. Uh, but one of the problems with this is it's, it's not transparent, so I can't see uh, how densely the cricket eggs are being laid. I have to actually dig in the dirt a little bit uh, to see for myself. If it's really dense, you'll see tons and tons of cricket eggs just on the top of the container. Now, some people uh, don't like giving open containers like this uh, to the crickets because the male crickets and the female crickets may not be interested in laying their eggs. They may just like the surface as an area to burrow and to make forts and they'll go in and they'll dig things up and they might throw things around a little bit. Uh, I don't think that's a really big deal. I've never had an issue with that. Um, so from time to time I'll find a cricket that will be uh, will have burrowed itself quite a ways deep into the substrate, but that's not a real big deal to me. But if it is a big deal to you, uh, a common way that people solve it is they put a layer of screen on top of this and they put the substrate right up to the screen. And what that does is it allows the females to walk on the screen and she can deposit her eggs through the holes in the screen, but no one's able to go play around and dig in the dirt because the screen is preventing them from um, getting actually into the substrate. And so if you're concerned about crickets causing a little bit of a mess, you can put the screen on. I've never used it, I've never had an issue. Now, put the substrate in the bin and really, I guess depending on the number of crickets you have, but if a lot of your crickets are mature enough and ready to lay eggs, you will get plenty of eggs in a 24 hour period. Uh, you just wanna make sure that it's nice and warm inside your, your brooder. If you don't have it uh, at a temperature that the crickets like in the 80s or close to 90, you're not gonna get many eggs laid. So this is a time where you're gonna wanna make sure your heat lamp's on or that your heaters are running so that at least for this 24 hour period, your crickets are laying a bunch of eggs. And I only advise collecting eggs for about 24 hours. Some people think, well, I can just put that in there and I can leave it in there for a week and collect a bunch of eggs. What I don't like about that is if you've been letting crickets lay eggs for a week, when it comes time for those eggs to hatch, they're gonna hatch over the course of a week. And for me, it's just a lot easier to deal with crickets when they all hatch at the same time, within a 24 hour period, instead of having some hatching Monday, some hatching Tuesday, some hatching Wednesday. And you don't want to have crickets that have hatched multiple days apart from each other, because then the older crickets, even though they may only be a few days older, may eat the smaller crickets, and we don't want that. So I like to give them just 24 hours. Uh, another benefit to that, uh, if you are really trying to maximize the amount of eggs that are laid, uh, I haven't proven this myself, but I've heard people say that if you remove the substrate for 24 hours at a time and then put it back in for 24 hours, remove it, put another substrate in for 24 hours, you're actually gonna get more eggs from your crickets than if you just give them a substrate continuously to lay their eggs in. I'm not sure why this is the case. Maybe some sort of deprivation uh, of substrate scares them. So when a substrate comes back in their container, they get really excited and think, geez, 
I better lay eggs to make up for uh, a risk of it uh, not being there in the future. I don't know. But really, 24 hours should be as much as you need. If you have a small backyard farm like I'm in right now, you're going to get more eggs than you're going to need with just that. You don't need a bunch of... Um, a bunch of uh, a bunch of eggs okay so your crickets have laid eggs 24 hours have passed it's time to incubate them now what's really important about incubating them is uh, the heat and humidity so first off you want it to be really humid I'm talking 80 90 percent humidity above and this is really important because it keeps everything really moist you want that substrate to remain moist to the touch. If it starts to dry out, there's a risk that the eggs are going to dry out as well. And when the eggs dry out, that means they're not going to hatch. They just have uh, been completely wasted. And so depending on the humidity uh, that you have, you may have to add additional moisture uh, into your process. So, so in a perfect world, you're going to have a very humid place to put these. Uh, in my commercial farm, I actually have one room that we just have a humidifier going on all the time. And so the humidity stands around 85%. And that substrate stays really moist. And we don't have to worry about the eggs drying out. However, in my backyard farm that I'm in right now, I don't run a humidifier. Instead, I have heat lamps. And the heat lamps, while it keeps it nice and warm, it does start to dry up the substrate. So here's some substrate that I had on the heat lamp, and you can see that it's uh, pretty getting close to rock solid, and we don't want that. Uh, if I dig under the dirt, it's a little bit darker uh, and moist, so that I doubt things have desiccated at this point. But what I want to do is add water to this. And so under the heat lamp, I actually have to add water probably twice a day, um, otherwise it will dry out. So I've just sort of made my own home watering bin, um, and I get it pretty wet. You want it very wet to the touch, but you don't necessarily want standing water. And now that this is nice and moist, I'll put it back under the heat lamp where it's around 90 degrees. Now, the problem with this is twice a day I have to add water to this, and it's not humid very much in my backyard farm. And so uh, it's kind of a pain. To make it more humid without running a humidifier, there's a few tricks. The one I like to use is just to put a little bit of plastic sheeting over the uh, over your substrate container. So this I just drape over the top of it, and you can see how wet and moist it is. I haven't added any water to this, but it is still very wet to the touch. Uh, there's no need to add any more water. So. Uh, just covering it with some plastic sheet or even some uh, kitchen uh, wax paper will be enough to keep some of the moisture in there. Now, one problem about doing it this way is that mold will start to form in, in your substrate. Uh, there really isn't any in here right now, but you will see like little feather things to start to form. And what I do is every day I just go in and I take those out. I just pick that out or uh, brush it out and as long as you do that every day and you check and make sure that a bunch of mold isn't forming in there you should be fine uh, if you don't remove it every day and you just let it form it will take over the entire thing of substrate and it will just turn solid um, solid mold and none of your eggs will hatch so you want to make sure that you're removing mold you can also run an air filter to clean the air of any sort of uh, fungi particles uh, but if you want to save money and not run a humidifier, not run an uh, air filter, just you know, cover it with plastic sheeting and pull out the mold once a day or so. Now, how long does it take to incubate? Now, as long as you can keep the eggs wet and moist and humid, uh, they will hatch, but it's really dependent on the temperature. Now, if you are able to keep the temperature at around 90 degrees, maybe even 91 degrees, so maybe slightly warmer than the adult crickets like, you can get the cricket eggs to hatch in around nine or 10 days. Now, if you don't have it that hot, it's gonna take longer and longer, and it's a fairly linear relationship. 
So uh, at my commercial farm, I'm in no rush to get the eggs to hatch as soon as possible. I keep it around 85 degrees just to save a little bit of money on electricity so I don't have to heat it up to 90 degrees. And at 85 degrees, it takes about 11 or 12 days for the eggs to hatch. Um, and in my backyard farm, I have the heat lamp under there. And so um, there's a little bit of variability. It might take me 14 or 15 to, uh, days to hatch, even though it's 85 degrees uh, in my backyard farm. Now, there's been times when I haven't used a heat lamp and I've just um, sort of let the natural environment uh, heat the eggs. They will hatch as long as it's sufficiently warm enough for a long enough time. So one time in the summer, I would say the average temperature was probably around 80 during the day and uh, would get down to around 50 at night. Uh, without any additional heating, it took about 35 days for my eggs to hatch. Uh, so I really do think there's really this linear relationship between uh, the heat and how quickly the eggs will hatch. You can do it in as few as nine days, but if you want to save a little bit on heat, um, you should count on 15, even 20 days. Um. Okay, that's about all I have for today. I'm going to end this by showing a little clip of some of my crickets uh, excitingly laying eggs in the substrate. Um, this is a video I shot about 30 minutes after I put my substrate in the bin with my adult crickets. Um, they're just driven and they really want to lay eggs in there. So within 30 minutes, you'll see that my substrate was full and the crickets uh, were just laying eggs like crazy. Thanks a lot. If you have any questions, please just leave a comment in the video section below. Thank you.